Well, here we are again, uh, having a good chat, me and Maggie, uh, as always. Uh, you might not enjoy it, but we definitely enjoy our times just chatting about the Lord and the good things that God is doing in our lives and ministry. As you can tell, I've had a bit of a change of venue. Um, they've uh, put me into the spare room just to get me out of the way today, but it doesn't matter. We're still going to chat and talk about some stuff that I know is going to really bless you. Um, we talked last week about um, just how sometimes operating in faith and witnessing to people and um, how we sometimes just have to really dig in and uh, it costs us to walk by faith and, and not by sight. Uh, it really does. It means we have to take, uh, John, when we used to call it risks, I don't think it's risks when, you, when we're stepping out in faith on God, but sometimes it feels like a risk, doesn't it? So, And I'm sure, Maggie, at times you've taken some real risks in, in, in the way that you've had to minister people and see them set free. So have you got any stories for us? You've always got a story for us. <laughs> Give us a few examples of how you've taken some faith steps and uh, min minister to some, perhaps some of the lads. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Steve. I mean, John Wimber used to say, I think, didn't you? You spell faith, R A S K. Yeah. <laughs> that's 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 good. Um, yeah, um, I don't know if I want to start with with the guys, Steve, but I think, yeah, of course, uh, ministering to people and and sharing Jesus with people, especially, I think, when it's the first time. Um, is always a risk but it's an exciting risk mm -hmm. and see i think for me steve whether it's like ministering in china with the guys or now back being in the uk and being in the same situation as most of the people are, who are listening at the minute you know i think it's it's all part of the same thing do you know what i mean that that um reaching out to people sharing jesus with people is part of a lifestyle thing so it isn't just my ministry, it's got to be my life, hasn't it? And that God will ask me to take some risks in doing that. Mm. And so I suppose, I mean, for me, it's, it's always about saying to God, not just about the reaching out to people bit of my life, but about, you know, every day, really. Okay, God, what are you doing today? Where do you want me to join in? That's, now, that's the first risk. Mm. <laughs> It's a great prayer to pray. You know, Jesus said, I can only do what you are doing, Father. And, yeah. and that's the same for us. So, so my, my first risk that I tend to take, not every day, but most days I'll say that. Yeah. God, what are you doing? Show me and show me where to join in. And although it's a risk, because, you, because you're, you're saying to me, I want to partner with you, something is going to happen, but something good's going to happen. So I would say that's, that's, you know, that's a good place to start if you want to take risks with God, but if you want to see something happen with him. Mm. So um, just an example, not from the, board, the guys, but from something recent, actually, um, that I was feeling ever so fed up about three weeks ago. I got a terrible pain in my leg, didn't want to do anything, knew I'd got to go out for a walk, a bit fed up because there was nothing much happening in our community. And I said to God, okay, you know, I'm going to go for a walk and I want to show me, I want you to show me what you're doing and I want you to remind me mm -hmm. where I'm at with you, what you've got for me to do. So anyway, I'm taking that risk again, you know, I'm saying I want, I want a chance to partner with you and do something, even though I was feeling fed up <laughs> and got round the corner and there's a lady walking along and looking like, you know, just absolutely desolate. You could almost feel it on this lady, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know what's going to happen. And I don't want to do it really. But I know that the Holy Spirit is saying, OK, you ask me, here's your chance. It's one of those God setups, you know, and, and, and the Gospels are full of those God setups. Some people call them divine appointments, which sounds very grand. <laughs> but, you know, if, if you're after taking risks with God, he, he will always answer that kind of question. Mm. And so there's this lady. Anyway, to cut the story short, um, I went up and, 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 got, and got talking to her and she was in a, a terrible state. She just had some awful news uh, which had left her devastated. And so again, it's okay, you know, God, what do I do next? And we got talking and I felt to tell her straight away, Steve, that the reason I'd gone and talked to her was that I'd had a nudge from God. It absolutely mm -hmm. broke her open. Just broke her open. I wouldn't always do that, but I felt that push, you know? 
Anyway, uh, she's been around to my house several times for coffee and we've, I've told her about Jesus, I've prayed with her, and there's a long way to go yet. But this week she is reading Luke's gospel in her own language. She's not an English lady, she's from another part of Europe. She's only here for a short time. But you, you know, it's, it's taking that risk and then something amazing happens. And he's not just going to lead us through the first step. If I trust him, he's going to show me the next step and the next step and the next step. And as long as I don't, you know, try and grab it for myself and say, oh, look what I've done. He, he's going to keep working. So, you know, in just a couple of weeks, I've seen just such a change in that lady's life. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, it's in a way, it's really simple, isn't it, Steve? <laughs> it is definitely simple. And I think... One of the things we fail to do a lot of the times is just play our individual part. Because yes. somet sometimes, you know, the scripture says, uh, one man sows and another man reaps, but it's God that gives the increase, you know. Yes. And I think there are times where we are thinking that we're actually um, speaking to somebody for the first time about Christ, but actually yes. the Holy Spirit's been at work in them over a long period of time. Absolutely. And, uh, we had a bit of an example of that the other week. Me and Andy went up to church to um, assess all the jobs that needed doing, and on the way back, we stopped off and had a, a little drink. And this uh, couple in the table opposite looked straight at me and said, oh, you did my mom's funeral. And the conversation just opened straight up and the gospel was straight in there. So another link in the chain. We never intended to, I never intended to bump into them, didn't think they'd even be in there. And yet yes. God, God opens the door. And I think we should be really mindful of that. Uh, and the other, one of the other things I was thinking about the other day is, especially with our own family, I think that's where people struggle a little bit in witnessing to, family members as well as you know people who are close to us because they know yes. us better than we know ourselves sometimes and um i believe that's part of why jesus told us to to pray the lord of the harvest to send him workers i think sometimes we need to leave some of our relatives with god and pray that someone will cross their path at work or yes. down the supermarket and all of a sudden they'll they'll believe because it came from another voice so i think it's very interesting how god blends all of that things together if we're walking faith, you'll bring people across our path. Yes, absolutely. And I agree about the family thing, you know, because sometimes, Steve, I'm, I'm a bit of a pusher, you know. I, I, want, I want to push at things. And, and especially with some of the younger members of my family, God said to say to me, back off, just, just keep loving them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've seen him use people in their workplace. I've seen people giving them books about sports people who happen to be Christians, you know, and then they've come and tell me about it. And, and I've been gobsmacked, but he's, he's doing the work. And another thing I'd say, Steve, you know, I, I think sometimes we can kind of put up our own obstacles about people and, and, and you know, we, we think that person isn't going to be interested in God or spiritual mm -hmm. things or anything. And we're very apologetic. And... Again, I'm not suggesting that we push at all because God certainly doesn't need us to push. But um, some friends of mine at church were just telling me the other day about a lady, an old lady, that they've been doing shopping for, you know, during the lockdown. And um, they thought they'd invite her to lunch. So, so she came for lunch and she got to meet some other, meet some other people from church. And then another friend who happened to be there said oh do you want to have a coffee sometime and they really clicked and they, they've had coffee two or three times but it was clear that this lady although she's she's not closed i think she's not close to jesus but she's pretty mm -hmm. switched off about church you know <laughs> like yeah. lots of people can be and so my friend was really careful you know and my friend thought oh i better back off here and just you know really not mention spiritual things too much but anyway, um, recently she felt a real prod to say to this lady, you know, I don't know if you're interested at all, but we're doing an alpha course online starting next week. And then, you know, she kind of thought, oh dear, I might have gone a bit far there. Yeah. Really, the lady signed up on her own. She's starting okay. alpha next week, 83 years old. And, you know, it was just what she needed. She, she'll probably feel safer doing that in her own home. Um, where she can work it out for herself yeah. and and so my friend was completely right you know but we can so often I think we can we can back off and think um you know I'm, I'm yeah. this person isn't ready or whatever and I think again it's it's asking God for the people who are ready and then trusting him 
and going all the way that he shows us. And then, as you say, leaving it alone. Definitely. Definitely. I think part of that as well is, is being prepared in prayer. You see the life of Jesus well before he ministers to anybody. He's spending that time alone with the Father. Mm. And one of the things I felt really help, helpful for me personally, especially during these lockdown times, is actually making some very positive confessions over people that I want to reach for Christ. So <laughs> I pray in particular, I tell our folks all the time, I pray over my boys. I've prayed over my boys since the day they were born and use a confession every morning that all my sons will be taught by the Lord. And Great will be my children's peace. But if there's somebody that you're praying for in particular, seek seek a word from the scripture and, and yeah. begin begin to pray that and confess it over the lives. You'll be surprised as you begin to speak out faith filled words, how the spirit of God just just is drawn to that. The angels are drawn to it, you know. We've got more power in our tongue than than I think sometimes we imagine. You know, scripture says life and death are in the, the power of our yeah. tongue. And um, sometimes you hold a little back. Just, and again, if we've been confessing that over them, when the next time you see them, just drop, just drop the words out and yes. see what the, what the Holy Spirit will yes. do. I've, I've found yes. that's been quite amazing. Sometimes just, just letting the scripture go and see what effect it has on somebody that really, you know, don't, you don't even think they're near to Christ yes. at all. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I think that's, that, that is, that's a wonderful thing to do. And I think also, you know, I know God's shown us, you know, ar around the church, like prayer walk around the estate, around mm -hmm. our building, prayer walk around, you know, our own roads. I mean, some of us have been prayer walking quite a bit just in our own streets. Um, and again, to do that, sometimes over specific houses, specific families, mm -hmm. um, or, or in an area, you know, where you feel there's, there's a great need, God will give you something or a promise for that particular area. You don't always see, of course, exactly what happens there. But I think, you know, it's, it is a preparation as well. And I know, you know, we, we, get, we used to go on the streets quite regularly on a Friday morning in our community. We haven't been for a while because it's hard. You know, people don't want to feel they're being approached so much. Mm -hmm. And so we've taken a different tack. And sometimes we'll just go out to us and pray around the area. But we'll say to God, you know, if there's anybody ready here then you show us and asking him for words to speak before we go and also you know like we said before i think you know praying in the spirit i know jackie pulling just taught me that you know she used to say that when she'd go out doing outreach and she she wouldn't see a lot happen and then and god really showed it to prepare herself by praying in the spirit and she said you know she started by like praying 15 minutes before she went out and she said that she did exactly the same things when she went out, but the difference in the results and the fruit Absolutely. Yeah. was like amazing. And because you are actually moving the heavenlies, you are doing stuff that you don't understand. Uh, you're not just interceding, of course, at that point. And, and it is, it's battling, isn't it? it is so so I, I would say, you know, not just for that as well, because so often, if you're going to see somebody, if I'm going to visit somebody in my street or having them round, mm. if, you, if you've prepared yourself praying in the spirit, also you're much looser about hearing God for that mm. person. And it's just, it's a, it's a practical thing. It's a spiritual thing. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's, I think it's a, a real key um, for seeing God doing stuff. Definitely. I think the whole thing around um, Jesus telling us to, you know, whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth will be loose mm. in heaven. Sometimes we have to take the spiritual authority before we start to take the land. You know, yes. we have to sp speak yeah. the words and prepare the spiritual atmosphere. I mean, the yeah. scripture t teaches us quite clearly that, you know, that people's eyes are blinded to the gospel, uh, that the spirit of this age has blinded their eyes. So yes. we are in a battle against those principalities and powers. And uh, quite clearly, some areas are harder sometimes to witness in than others, you know. You can feel the spiritual oppression. I mean, you probably witnessed to that in China, wouldn't you? At times, there's been places that are very, very dark and difficult to minister in. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, n not, not not necessarily out in the community, mm. but like if you're living with 30 drug addicts, it's it's you know, some mornings I would wake up, Steve, and I would you know I'd have all sorts of senses from the spirit about what was going on in the family. You know, like some some mornings I wake up and it was literally felt like there were knives coming through the wall. Mm. or that I remember one night we, I was praying with the helpers and, and it just felt like we were on a bus and that nobody was driving the bus and it was out of control mm. and you know the Holy Spirit started to show us what that was about 
and and you'd really have to you know seek god intercede pray in the spirit and and see how to deal with those issues in prayer before you went to tackle them in the flesh <laughs> um and i think i mean you know i i love that story in numbers i think it's numbers 13 where you know where they're preparing to take the promised land and and you know the funny thing is of course god said to them i've already given you the land the land is yours mm. so in a way the, the children of israel didn't need to go and look at it or the leaders didn't need to go and look at it and check it out because god told them it was theirs and they could take it but but he kindly gave them the opportunity to go and have a look now, of course, it, some of them decided that they, that they then couldn't take the land. Mm -hmm. But I think in there, if you look at it, I, I, I like to use that with people that I am taking out to prepare land because it says there's certain things to look for. You know, look, what, what is the land like? What are the people like? What are their needs? And where is the enemy at work in that place? And what is the potential fruit in that land? And I think, you know, sometimes if, you, if you're praying in your community, walking around like that and looking, and looking in the spirit and saying, God, what are the needs here? What are we praying to? What, what's the enemy doing here that we need to battle about? And what is the good stuff that actually you're, you're already doing, that, that God's actually trying to stir up in that place or in those people that yeah. you can then draw out as you're praying? Yeah. Um, and, and I found those sort of keys quite helpful when you're preparing to reach out to, to a group of people or in a community. Yeah, I quite find it interesting, that little story you said about the driver, of, uh, the buzz with no driver. I think mm. sometimes that's how many people live their Christian walk, really, uh, just allowing things to veer to one side or the other. But, you know, clearly we, we have the guiding of the Holy Spirit. We are supposed to be led by the Spirit of God, and we should make sure that we are listening to his voice daily, shouldn't we? You yeah. know, so that, that you know, Wherever he tells us to go, we will go. Whatever he asks us to do, we will do. And we'll start to see the miraculous out of that. Mm. I think where, where Christians fail is that they just live this random set of events in their lives without any reliance on the Holy Spirit at all, and then wonder why they're very, very poor at winning anybody to Christ or seeing healings or miracles or moving out in anything because mm. literally it's, it's all kind of hand-to-mouth Christianity. And God's called us beyond that, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just tell you, you, you know, we have a purpose in God and you mm. need to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit every single day of your life uh, and let him do what he wants to do. Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, Steve, that, you know, I know we, we talk about some people are evangelists, some people are prophets, all that, you know, and, and of mm. course I believe that and I know that God's provided for his mm. church and for his kingdom in that way. But, I, uh, you know, he... he he said to all the disciples go and make disciples and and i think you know for all of us who followers of jesus mm -hmm. um, that that is the main um, that's our main purpose whatever gifting we come with in that you know uh, even if it's only being like he says witnesses and sharing with people what i've seen what i've heard of jesus that is the mandate uh, it isn't just paying off my mortgage. It isn't just struggling through and getting the kids no. through school or whatever. And so that in all areas of my life, there's the opportunity. And, you know, and if I believe, I think we've got away from this so much. If I believe that, you know, that we've got the answer to what mm. life's really about. And if I believe that in the afterlife, there's going to be, you know, life or not life. Um, then you know that's serious stuff isn't it and I think we've got away from that quite a bit and we can be a bit carefree about about stuff mm. and lose the focus and this, this, these are such crucial times where, where people are in terrible need it's it's not getting better and you know more and more people are going to be facing more and more uh, pain and need Pops being out of work and mm. afraid of sickness again as, as we approach more of this mm -hmm. uh, COVID stuff. And, you know, we, we've got to be there, haven't we, with life, with the offer of life for them and hope. Yeah. We've got to pray for those opportunities. Of, you don't know about this, but this is a little story that's transpired just this last week at the church. Um, we were really blessed on Monday to find out that one of the nursing homes in Sedgley had been live streaming our Sunday morning service. 
Um, and they f filmed the residents watching it, and you could hear me preaching, which was which was terrifying, really. But you could hear my, hear my preaching going across the the day room as they panned around all the old folks. You know, we, 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 I've been personally praying for those major opportunities that God mm. would open big doors. Let's not just w pray for one or two. Let's pray for whole communities to Absolutely. be born again. Yes. That's, that's really exciting. So we've, uh, by the grace of God, we're going to push out and see if we can get a few more notes and I was connected. But what a wonderful thing the Spirit of God did without us having yes. to try, really. Yes. Um, so we, as we rely on God, you know, he does some wonderful things for us. It opens doors, I think. That's what faith and prayer does as we step out. He opens doors that are supernatural and uh, you can't make, manufacture those. That's just the doing of God, isn't it? That's right. But but also, who, whoever did that, whoever thought of, of streaming that in that old people's home, I don't know whether it's somebody from your church who works there or whatever. No, but, not as far as we know. Yeah. But, you know, that again, that is the creative power of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? Mm. Prompting people to do those things. And, and I think, you know, that's another thing to pray about, that we are all as individuals, that we're open to any ideas, because the Holy Spirit's got every idea in the universe. He <laughs> really is, mm -hmm. you know, he's not going to be short on ideas. And, and he can find all kinds of ways for us um, to, to share with, G with people about Jesus. Not, as you say, not just ones and twos, but, but for many, many people to hear about him. Um, and I think in this season, it seems that God is stirring up more people with more creative ideas than mm -hmm. ever so that the gospel is going wider than it's ever been. When you think of the number of people who are watching on Sundays mm. and on other days um, and, and have got access and people who are reading Christian books, I, I heard from, from somebody that the number of people who are reading books on things like prayer and healing is like yeah. about five times what it usually is. Uh, the sales have gone up, the online sales have gone up absolutely phenomenally. Yeah. Because people are hungry and asking questions. Yeah, huge sales of Bibles as well have gone through, gone through the roof. Yeah, I think what I heard somebody say once, you know, what we need to do is just look what the Holy Spirit's doing and get involved. And, you know, quite clearly the Holy Spirit is involved in, in the first nurses. You know, and praise the Lord. So we want to get involved in that. And, and then if that's the pattern the Holy Spirit is using, then we'll push out and speak to a few more nursing home and their teams there and pray that God's going to open this kind of door. So, if you're a leader or a pastor or you're just working wanting to see people saved, let's just see what the Holy Spirit's doing. Go yeah. and find out what he's up to and just join in because he's, he's always successful when the Holy Spirit's at work. Yes. You know, what we can't do with our planning and scheming and all our little projects, the Holy Spirit just has mm -hmm. an amazing way of opening doors. And as you say, just even speaking to unbelievers and maybe prompting one of those nursing staff at the home just to think, oh, what can we do on a Sunday? Perhaps we'll take him to church. And all of a sudden, you know, our ministry's there they're singing hymns and they're in really enjoying themselves. And, you know, our prayer is that will happen more and more, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's, you know, that what you've just said, Steve, that for me, that, and I keep coming back to it, I know, but that is the most important question. And especially now that we can ask, you know, God, what are you doing? What are you actually doing in our community? And, and where do you want us individually and as the church, you know, as church families? to join in. Um, I think it's really important because what happens otherwise is as a leader, you start to look around at other people's churches, other people's areas. You mm. start to think to yourself, well, we, we must not be up to, to much because we don't look like Bethel or we don't look like Hillsongs or we don't look like this church or that church and start to follow models of church pattern and behavior that actually the Holy Spirit had never got planned for, for Sedgley or for Leicester. You know, mm -hmm. that he's already written something in eternity. He's got, he's got a plan for our area because he knows who lives there. He knows how they need to come to faith, when they need to come to faith. He's not taken by surprise. Yeah. So, you know, we should do what James says. If anybody lacks wisdom, let's ask of the Lord because yeah. he's going to give it to us abundantly. And I think if anything we need right now is the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to see who God's moving on, that we might get in there and witness and pray for them and see them come to faith. Yes, yeah. And, and, of course, the great thing is that he will always answer that question. He'll, he'll, mm -hmm. he'll always answer that for us, won't he? And he'll always give us the wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, those are his promises. And it's the thing that he wants to do most, isn't it? To bring people to him in, in relationship with him and into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to fail on that. But it is coming back to this thing that you talked about first, Steve. You know, am I prepared to take those risks? And 
and the risk, you know, in, as we said, if it's with him and I'm getting used to trusting him, it, it isn't a risk. And, 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 and also the life that God brings to us as we do that, mm. you know, to me, it's life bringing to be doing that. Mm -hmm. That if I'm not reproducing myself, if you like, I'm not fully alive. No. And that was the first thing that Jesus, uh, that God said to Adam, wasn't it? Be fruitful, multiply and fill the whole earth. Yeah. And then when sin came into the earth and God got angry and, and decided that he'd flood the earth and again, work through Noah. The, the, f the first thing that Noah does when he gets off that ark, he's, he's build an altar and God says to him again, you know, be fruitful, fruitful multiply and, and fill the earth. So it's definitely the heart of God that we should, you know, be out there with evangelism and, and just being fruitful. There's so much talk in church about faithfulness. I think that's just down to like, you know, if you, if you, if you can turn up for 30 years, then you've done a, a good Christian life. Well, you know, that's not true. Jesus said that he wants us to bear fruit and, and fruit, much fruit, I think the word says. So mm -hmm. we, want to, we want to do that, don't we? So well, it's been brilliant chatting. That these, these times just fly by, don't they? It's, uh, <laughs> we, get, we, get, we get on here and just before we go live, we go, no, no, we, we, we ain't going to have enough to talk about today. <laughs> <laughs> really find plenty to talk about so i think it would be nice now if you could just pray for us that god would just uh, give us the opportunities that we've talked about and help us to take those risks and you know what you know what have we got to lose maggie if people are dying and going to hell what have we got to lose you know we just want to pay our part in winning people to christ don't we Absolutely. yeah so Absolutely. pray for us pray for us if you would do yes yes Yes, the Holy Spirit, thank you for all we've just shared just now of all of the truth. It's all truth, Father, about you and about the way you work. And I pray right now for everybody who's listening, Holy Spirit, that you would just first, you would bring us back to that place of perspective to see what you were really about. And, and Holy Spirit, I pray that you'd stir us up, you'd set us on fire, you would excite us with the purpose of the Father which is to bring people to himself. Mm. And I pray for this week that you would give us opportunities, not that we try and make anything happen. Thank you, we don't have to do that. Set us free from that. But I pray you surprise every person listening by giving them opportunities mm -hmm. to share Jesus in the power of the Spirit and to Amen. see beautiful things happen for his glory. Amen. Amen. Well, we record these things in advance, so uh, by the time you've listened to this, you will have heard Maggie preach on Sunday morning. So thank you, Maggie, for a fantastic message. I've not listened to it yet, but I'm sure God, God's inspired you to give us a, a word. And uh, for me, it's the first time in 27 weeks I've taken a, a Sunday off, which I can't believe. Um, I'm not taking the Sunday off, by the way. I'm doing some other stuff. But, you know, God's doing some great things among us, and let's keep on praying and believing and trusting. So thank you, Maggie, once again for your input. Thank you for listening and tuning in really do appreciate this and uh, we know that god is changing lives as we talk about the good things of god so god bless you till next week and we'll see you soon